So we finished the last episode of me applying the silver uh, pigment over the white base I've created before. What I didn't show on the camera is later on when this is dry, I'm applying a fine line masking tape right on the silver to create a an edgy basically, a kind of pinstripe, a fine pinstripe um, with an airbrush um, of silver to bridge the the red and later on the black because we're gonna apply black next. So directly after I apply that um, fine line masking tape on that silver to shield it, I uh, went ahead and covered the whole thing and and spray some black on it uh, as we're going to have two-tone paint. So the red is a base color, then is a fine line uh, silver, which I'm just unmasking right now, and inside is going to be black with some patterns on it. Um, I believe that's called the reverse masking. There are a number of ways of uh, achieving that effect. Uh, I chose this way. In my head, it's easier to work like this, but you could have obviously done it the other way around, so apply the black everywhere and then mask off, you know, the area you want to have it silver and spray silver on top of it. But this way, in my opinion, the paint buildup is too much. Um, it's workable, you visually have the same effect, but it's a lot more work later on when it comes to polishing it down, you know, when you uh, when you lay down a clear, clear coat, the paint buildup seems to be quite aggressive. Uh, so I do it this way, and the result is the same. And I know everybody likes some good, you know, unmasking, so I'm just going to shut up and leave a couple of good shots for your viewing pleasure. Enjoy. What we've got here is failure to communicate. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I fast forward a little bit just to skip the boring parts, get into something a bit more interesting. Don't know if you can see it, I've got a little Harley Davidson emblems, the Bar and Shield logo, um, printed, cut in the plotter all over the front mudguard, the rear one as well. Goes here, nice pattern. I decided to put him slightly at the angle this way and go across symmetrically across all the pieces um, and I'm going to apply just a few gentle layers of metallic pearl pearl rather than metallic pearlescent silver just so they standing out a little bit but they're not too much in your face so I'm going to go ahead and do it now
just like with every paint job, the prep, it's what's taking the time, you know. People usually think it's like, oh yeah, you take the petrol tank and you paint it, yeah. Yeah, the painting itself is the most enjoyable part and the part that's taking the least amount of time. But the prep, and that includes cleaning up the stencil and putting on the stencil, making sure the stencil goes in the right way in, the right distances and the right measurements and it's symmetrical or asymmetrical depending on the design you're working on. But that's what takes the most time. All the prep, all the behind the work bullshit you don't really see every day. So no, it's not just taking your petrol tank and painting it, it's all the prep. But that goes with everything, you know, every trade is the same, not just the custom paint. But you all know it, I know it, yet everybody seems to be forgetting about it never now and again. These are the notes I took when I was originally discussing the uh, job of the customer. As you can see, very, very professional notes. But from from this, we got to here, which uh, we are completely done with artwork, and we are ready to rock and roll with some clear coat on it. Hopefully, that will make everything pop a little bit more than it is right now. Thank you, guys. Last look on it before we laid out some clear let's do it here we are after first initial clear coat and as you can see it's popping nicely it's not looking the best yet because it was just the first layer of clear so that one is polishing and all this but that's not the point the point is um, this is still glossy because it's very very fresh and it looks like this, and I think it looks really good. Um, but the main finish is going to be, is going to be matte. It's going to be matte clear coat on it, which is what the customer all wanted. Uh, I don't think it will give it the justice. Personally, I don't think it will pop as nice as this is because you can see it, and then you can't. So it's kind of relying on the reflectiveness a little bit. But nevertheless, the matte finish is also a really good option here. So um, we'll see how it's looking when it's actually ready. I'm going to give it a couple of days for it to fully cure. I've got some runs, some imperfections here. I need to get rid of that. And after, we're going to apply the final layer of the matte finish. And I'll take you to there. And here we have it, guys. Ready product. Finished in matte clear coat. This is how it look like. Well, I'm very happy with it, but you tell me what you think about it. The biggest challenge I found with that mud clear coat is I cannot polish it. <laughs> because if I polished it, it would be shiny in one place and mud finish in the other. So I needed to make sure I'm working in a very, very clean environment. The petrol tank, for example, I had to redo uh, twice because when I finished, 
I have a tiny little fruit fly landed somewhere over there and then a bit of you know dust you know spectacles of dust just landed somewhere here uh, I don't know where they came from but uh, so as though they appear right in the end of the job so there was no other way around it I had to cut it down completely with some paper and redo that you know so uh, but this time around I took extra caution and it actually looks really good I like them little Harley Davidson logos they not exactly in your face they kind of disappearing when you're looking from a different angle uh, it's a pearlescent silver I use underneath uh, it's a good touch you know it doesn't make it it's not so boring you know it's not just a regular you know uh, two-tone paint job you got something extra else going on in there which uh, I've not seen this before and that will be it for today guys I hope you enjoyed this I hope you can pick up some uh, nice tips from it. This is how I do it. It's not the right way to do it. It's not the wrong way to do it either, but you know, I've learned this way and this is the results I get following my process. Uh, each job is a little bit different, but uh, tell me what you think.